urinary incontinence is potentially a big problem. And we do have a lot of solutions for men, but for women, sometimes that refractory incontinence that you can't really manage well with just absorbent products, time voiding, or if the patient has urinary difficult or ambulatory difficulties so that she can't make it to the bathroom, there's a new solution that is out there that hasn't been talked about too much. And I'm not, I, I'm not sure if a lot of patients even know about it. It's called Pure Wick, made by BD. I'm very, very excited to have Yolanda Rhodes, who is a clinical nurse manager for this product in the studio today to discuss what it is, how you use it, and some uh, information about patient reimbursement and things like that. So welcome to the studio. Thank you so much for making the trip all the way from Texas Thank you. here so that uh, you can show the audience what you have here. So awesome. tell us a little bit about Purik. I understand this is developed by a physician, uh, Camille Newton, Newton, mm -hmm. uh, who's actually a home a visiting physician who saw a need for a female patient who was incontinent, her husband, was apparently turning her twice a night and she's still getting decubitus ulcers, meaning fluid or urine pulling behind, on, on her hind end mm -hmm. and causing ulcers. Mm -hmm. He did everything he could, absorbent products, keeping her clean, turning her over twice a night, which affects his sleep. And then she's not doing it as well just with that technique. So he came, he's an engineer. He came Correct. up with a homemade solution. He tried different things and eventually he collaborated with Dr. Newton and came up with this particular product. It launched in 2016. Mm -hmm. And then this particular product is can can be used in the office in, at home. I'm sorry, at home or in the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm very excited to hear more about it. Great. Yeah, we're really excited. And you're correct that the act, the product was actually created um, for home use um, for his wife. And that's correct. But what has happened even before we started utilizing the product more at home is acute hospital settings have been using it across the country. Um, many of them have found that they have placed it in their cotty bundles. Um, by talking to clinicians all over, I found that many of them, when patients enter the ED, they're utilizing it to use a pure wick instead of placing it in, in dwelling catheter because they found that patients were having more cotty infections with catheters being left in over long periods of time. Um, what's happened since then is patients were transitioning from the hospital setting home and still wanted to utilize the product and that's when the product just kind of just blew up we found that more patients were wanting to use it and have it available for home so this is actually our second generation collection system this system is a little more smaller and compact i was on the ground floor the first one that we had we, we launched was a much bigger device it was a plug-in unit only this device actually as i mentioned actually can be battery operated so you can charge it uh, overnight and it provides 12 hours of power and eight hours of additional backup power. We also have a unit that's just a, a unit that actually can be plugged in, whatever is most affordable for the patient at the time. So the advantage of this thing is that there's nothing that is being inserted into the patient. So the, for the hospitals, the hospital acquired infections mm -hmm. where they're dinged mm -hmm. uh, or Correct. penalized is uh, eliminated. Essentially, they don't have, there's no, well, not eliminated, but minimized because there's no foreign body. They don't have to keep track of that, ex that internal catheter. And also, you know, for urologists with deal with uh, chronic indwelling catheters, especially in female, you get mm -hmm. that urethral erosion. Correct. So infections, erosions, and a uh, small amount of risk of uh, developing uh, bladder cancer. So mm -hmm. those are all the things that we think about when a female requires uh, chronic indwelling catheter mm -hmm. for management of incontinence. Uh, also, the catheterization is uh, costly and it's kind of difficult to manage. It is, as I said, an internal indwelling product. Mm -hmm which makes it not so ideal in, in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. So this product was developed to help females mm -hmm. with urinary incontinence. And I'm excited to see what you guys come <laughs> up with for what PureWit comes up, comes up with for males in the future, but we'll see. But this is meant for females mm -hmm. and it's external. So you don't have to stick anything into the woman That's and it helps with urinary incontinence, meaning your you have a woman who may have had a stroke, neurologic issues, or can't get out of the bed after mm -hmm. some sort of a surgery, and she can't get to the bathroom, and she needs to void at night. This kind of helps with that. 
Absolutely, as well as your patients that have wound issues, um, immobility for whatever reason, even a demented patient that's a fall risk at night. Um, at one point, Medicare was covering a device, as I mentioned earlier, for patients that have significant urinary incontinence or urinary permanence, mm -hmm. which they categorize as three months or longer. So right now we're just waiting. They want additional home studies um, because they found that it's, it's awesome in the clinical setting. They've seen how hospitals, are, like I said, are using in their CAUTI bundles um, and pain, nurses are evaluating patients instead of putting that indwelling catheter in and utilizing this device. And it has shown a difference in the hospital. So one once we have more documentation to show them how well it's performing for patients at home, we're hoping that they will start to approve it, uh, approve it for patients again at home. Yeah. So, so right now it is not. It was covered by Medicare, mm -hmm. and now it's not at this time. <laughs> for about six months, it was it was very shocking to us because it had benefited so many patients, and definitely has seen patients, you know, getting the device, um, verbalizing how well pleased they were with the sleep deprivation for patients that self applied, patients that had caregivers that were assisting with. Um, you know, doing taking patients to the bed at night, obese patients that were fall risk or being able to have to be turned at oh, night, yeah. or diaper patients that have a wound or eventually develop a wound because of significant incontinence. It's been very beneficial to those families. Well, we'll 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 see what the studies show, and then uh, okay. hopefully Medicare will begin covering it again. So, tell us a little bit about the components of this thing. Okay. And how, how you actually use it? So, I about already opened the packaging, but actually, this is actually the wick. So um, this is what actually is going to be. So we'll, we'll, we'll pull okay. it down here so that okay. Okay. the audience can see This it. is actually what's going to be um, touching your patient. So a misconception is that, you know, people, clinicians think, is it suctioning my patient? It does not suction your patient. This is a soft gauze side. And this side is made of silicone. There is no latex in this product for your patients that have potential latex allergy. What happens is... It's actually suction actually occurs. The urethral opening hits about here. Urine is wicked down the soft gauze side and it's captured at the bottom of this wick. Okay, so it's not actually suctioning the patient. And so that's actually how the wick is made. So we'll hold it up a mm -hmm. little bit closer to the camera here. Mm -hmm. Once again, this is a soft material. Mm -hmm. I'll have you hold that. I'll hold that. Mm -hmm. Cloth material here and some sort of padding here. Mm -hmm. And this is a suction tube that goes all the way down to the bottom here. Mm -hmm. Easy assembly, easy disassembly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, and actually I just take it apart to show. So really that you can use that wig for eight to 12 hours. So this, it comes like this. You just yes, take sir. it out mm -hmm. of the bag, you just pull it out. That's and it. That's what it, and this is the part that touches the lape, the vaginal area mm -hmm. That's of, the, of the woman and the urethra is situated. You want to About put this there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And then they're going to use when this part comes to the top of the, you know, the pubic bone, it's going to be the anatomical marker about where that top portion should be. Right hit. there. Yes, sir. So mm -hmm. this device is then connected to. That's correct. This That's end of the suction tubing. Mm -hmm. And then this goes through this tube and then it goes into. That's correct. That container right there. Mm -hmm. And that container is hooked up to a pump, which mm -hmm. can run on Has battery internal suction in the hospital setting it's on wall suction and it's sure. set at about 40 millimeters of mercury this has an internal unit already in it. it's set about 120 to 140 millimeters of mercury but it's internal and it's, it's simply the press of a button for your patient at home and let's see and that's it when it's I actually see the green on. light right there mm -hmm. yeah. it's already a full charge so once it's charged it's ready to go all right. So it's just a flip of a button. Unlike in the clinical setting in the hospital, they have to set the, set the wall suction. It's already ready for them to utilize. Yeah, it's, it's general. This is the, this is really designed for mm -hmm. anybody who can. Anyone. Anyone mm -hmm. can use Does it. not have to be a clinical clinician. Any family member or a patient can self-apply. So this goes in the vaginal area. This connect gets connected to the tubing. Mm -hmm. the tubing gets into the canister and mm -hmm. then the uh, suction device. So if you have, if you're, okay, well. That's the home. That's home use. Mm -hmm. What about what if you have this patient who is uh, incontinent all the time mm -hmm. and wants to use this while in a wheelchair? Typically, these, these patients are wheelchair bound and mm -hmm. things like that. I don't know if I want this to be uh, shown to you know the fact that the canister is showing my pee. You know, what this I'm is what comes in. This is a privacy cover. 
So that's why I didn't put it on. I wanted you all yeah. to see it actually slides over. And what's revealed in the slit here, you can actually see the measurements. So uh -huh. if they're keeping... There we go. So... So this actually covers the unit, so the urine is not exposed. It does have a slit, so they can actually see the measurements of how much urine is contained into the unit. Now, if they're out in public, they can easily twist that canister around where the urine is not exposed there at all. There you go. Yeah, nice, nice and mm -hmm. So for my wheelchair patients, a lot of them have, have actually have come up with creative ways to put it on their wheelchair because when it was initially designed for home, we were not recommending wheelchair use, but we found that patients were very comfortable using it in their wheelchairs. Yeah. Some like um, they recline the wheelchair even. Our MS patients, they can recline, have reclining wheelchairs or just sit upright. Um, long as it's placed properly. Sure. But some and it of, stays in the right position. Mm -hmm. yeah. So some of them actually have put it um, on a platform at the bottom of their wheelchair. Got it. Have you ever seen vent patients? They kind of set a, the, the vent is on the platform at the bottom of their mm -hmm. wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Some of them have actually built platforms for this to connect to that. But what the most unique thing I've seen, some patients have found a longer type backpack and put it on the back of their backpack, secure with maybe towels to kind of keep it upright and just put it to the, on the back of their wheelchair. Right. right. So that way the tubing is going down their back and yeah. they can't actually- And it's kind of discreet too. It's discreet, that's correct. And I've even seen some ladies make the scrunchy kind of coverings to go over it. They so accessorize they it. <laughs> so they cannot see it, that is correct. So that's what's, you know, even at bedside, if they have company and they're utilizing it all day and they bring it to their dining, their living room, where they want to watch TV with family, it can still be covered and they can be very private. Excellent. Okay. Can you give us a quick demo of I how can. quickly? So this is our simulated, <laughs> this is our simulated P. <laughs> yes, yes. So that that's our man-made uh, urine there. Um, that I just use a little food color and it kind of just give the full effect. So I'm gonna turn the unit on first make sure everything is secure it's very important to make sure placement is truly key with the device as well making sure when i educate patients how to properly place it into the gluteal folds and up i mean gluteal cleft i'm sorry and up into the labial folds because the anatomy is what holds it in place there's no tape or anything else needed to hold it in place and we have actually two microphones in the studio and hey, let's be quiet for a second it's pretty quiet yeah so and that's a little liquids in there yeah you got the the, the air bubbles and, <laughs> yeah, and stuff yeah. like it. it's pretty quiet okay so let's give give the demo yeah so mm -hmm. proper positioning is key and maintaining it in the right position is key and now you have this thing mm -hmm. hooked up got the suction turn on and and this is simulating a lot a lot of urine yeah yeah and so just to give you an idea if a patient's on diuretics or otherwise and they're avoiding a lot at night or even during the day it can collect so <laughs> just to show you how quickly you so mean remember, it sucks really well yes <laughs> And there we go. That's a lot. I mean, that's pretty. Uh, Watch that's pretty how quickly fast. it suctions. Oh yeah, yeah, it collects very quickly. It's already almost four hundred ml. So that's a lot of incontinence. That's a lot of time. incontinence. <laughs> so for your heavy wetters at night, we know we have some. There you go. <laughs> it's going to collect. What I do do is I make sure that when they're removing the device, I'm going to remove it from the water a little bit. Keep the suction maintained when they're removing it from the, the vaginal opening, I mean the um, vaginal folds, so that the remainder of the urine goes into your canister. Sure, because the water goes down that way by mm -hmm. gravity and then the suction tip is there and then that, that just minimizes drippage and you see that exactly see there's not really any drippage from that device at the yeah. bottom and i'm holding it up for quite some time now yeah so if it's periods in between urination this little air hole in the back also kind of oh, helps yeah, it right dry there. out mm -hmm. yeah like right here so it's not overly saturated at any given time mm -hmm. got it so it works really, really well. You see how much it's been collected already in a matter of seconds. It suctions that fast. And it, when it's humming, a lot of it's kind of like a fish aquarium. Some people say it's kind of peaceful because that remember that's what it was based on. That scientists utilized the tubing and had it actually going into a fish aquarium yeah. tank and used the yeah. fish aquarium motor to make the actual initial product. Yeah, so. that founding story is really interesting. It's you know, it came out of necessity to take yeah. care of his wife and then he He's an engineer who came up with this solution, and now it's a product that's going to benef benefit a lot of yeah, a yeah. lot of females with urinary incontinence. It actually already has been.
then there's if you even go to your other social medias, Instagram and Facebook, there's posts about from patients and clinicians about how wonderful the device is um, for patients that, that are, are utilizing it. So as clinicians and physicians, I think it's just great to have this information about this product in our toolbox to share with our patients. All right. Well, I think this is a, a yeah. great invention and I think it's going to benefit a lot of yeah. a lot of female patients who have this incontinence immobilization mm -hmm. uh, that who are just leaking on themselves refractory to the re, the usual re absorbent mm -hmm. products this will keep the perineal area dry and it's going to mm -hmm. keep the buttock area dry to avoid the, those decubitus ulcers or minimize the risk of decubitus ulcers and infections mm -hmm. i think it's a, a wonderful idea i'm not sure if a lot of people are aware that this is out there yeah. and that's why i want to come on here and introduce this Thank to you. the uh, thriving urology practice facebook group members and no i'm not being paid to make this video this no. is a, not an endorsement or anything like that but i just want to i just want to share this information and let everyone know about what is available out there for women who have just really horrible incontinence during the day and at night correct actually. some patients use it once a day um, mainly at night because that's their biggest problem time yeah. and for your like your for example ms patient that's completely bed fast may use two wicks a day because they're good for eight to 12 hours yeah. i also teach them about cleaning and dis like disinfecting the device and just doing good or you no know, uh, perineal hygiene before use sure. with all the patients so sure. it's kind of clean mm -hmm. cleaning the area of the patient correct before uh, keep, use yeah mm -hmm. and also no barrier products when you're using this that's it. no the thing with barrier creams that you know because of redness and excoriation for a long time urinary incontinence is it can clog the wick so yeah. if they're using tons of barrier cream and it's in the uh, but in the vaginal folds it's it's not good so i'll tell them externally yes but not in the fold area because it can clog the wick right. and it's also kind Contraindicated during um, menses. So during a menstrual um, menstrual cycle, we don't recommend you, women use it then because it can clog the wick, or if they have a significant rectal incontinence, uh, you're uh, having fecal incontinence to not use it during that time frame either. Correct. Fecal mm -hmm. soiling is uh, mm -hmm. contraindicated, and uh, the this area right, you, you basically don't want this to get clogged up with any sort of a barrier Correct. product, barrier mm -hmm. cream. That's, mm -hmm. that's the main it, thing. It can impede suctioning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, where can people find more information about Pure Wick? Um, actually, they can contact myself um, or Natalie. Um, Who is my rep? Is your rep? <laughs> is your rep? Yes, here in Phoenix area. If they're anywhere else in the country, um, my contact number uh, email is Yolanda Rhodes at bardcare .com. Um, Natalie Delaire. I would pronounce it incorrectly. And uh, we can actually provide you that information. Also, she can be contacted. You want to provide your number? I I will put that in the video description. That'd be great. Yeah. We they can contact either of us. I do cover about sixteen states, so it's likely if I am not the clinical nurse for their area, there's a nurse a team member that i can actually make sure that they have contact with wonderful well i'm not seeing any comments and obviously if anyone with any uh questions or comments feel free to leave them in the comment section below and i look forward to hearing from you i want to thank you again for you. coming all the way from texas to do this for us and thank you natalie for arranging for this wonderful uh presentation thank you so and, much and uh take care everybody thank bye -bye. you bye-bye